the the amount of margin needed to keep on these thirty to one levered sovereign debt trades was going up because there was volatility, right. you know, in those markets. Because we all know Europe's been a little crazy uh, the last uh, couple of years. A little crazy. A little crazy. We're talking about a little fraud there, the CDS. Um, this is a sidebar. Okay. To me, when you package a derivative product and you don't describe what is inside that product and you don't disclose the risk, to me that's fraud. And I'm looking at this from more of a global perspective now, but look at how uh, J.P. Morgan packaged uh, derivative products to Al that little county in Alabama. Look at how they're packaging the sovereign and, and bribe the county in Alabama. To, oh my uh, God! Why? Why? I, let's let's go there. Why isn't someone in cuffs for doing that? Because to me, if you or I did that in this regulated environment, we would be in cuffs right now, and we would be behind bars. Yeah, I'm not sure how someone gets fined for for bribery, which is which is what happened in Jefferson County. Um, I, I really have no idea how that's not a crime. Yeah. Um, but, but I mean, it's 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 a very disturbing trend in this country that there's no accountability and that the deterrent that we're supposed to have in our criminal justice system is not being used. Now, one person got even indicted, let alone went to jail over what happened in 2008. And nothing has changed since then. I mean, Dodd Frank, you've got 860 pages of new red tape for people to jump to jump through. It's utterly meaningless. Right. Okay. No they matter. Swiss cheese. Regulation like that, honestly, it, it it serves to chill commerce and create lots of unnecessary expense and, and confusion, but it does nothing to prevent fraud. No matter how much you have in terms of regulation, people will find a way to commit fraud. Okay. Wait. You just hit on a word. Confusion. I started to make a list of how the two big to fail banks, what their strategy is. It appears to me that one of their strategies is to create confusion, to create things in a shadow. That's how they seem to operate to me. Sure, and I mean, and, and, and that's why we have the term shadow banking system because now, um, you know, post the repeal of Glass Steagall, banks don't exist to just hold deposits and make loans. Okay, they are now these just chimeras of, of, of risk-taking and Enron-like activities. I mean, the shadow banking system is where instead of fractional reserve lending, as, as a bank is supposed to do, they do is instead they, they ship money off to London where there's no regulation T capping the amount of uh, rehypothecation that, right. that's allowed to be done with client securities, yeah. and they just lever stuff up 30 to 1, and they use off-balance sheet derivatives like the repos to repos to maturity used in this case right. and they just lever stuff up and it doesn't appear on balance sheets I mean these are publicly held companies they're supposed to be regulated entities and none of this risk none of this exposure appears um, you know financial statements and if it does it's in like footnote 39 there's uh, some mention of uh, it like don't start MF global. disclosing uh, holding back disclosure of those financial statements that's another MF global controversy let me ask you a question though it seems to me that we're at a point with the debt crisis in Europe where uh, those two big to fail banks are so economically exposed that once they start tumbling, you know, that leverage is, is going to come back to haunt them. And we could be in a situation where the U.S. government is bailing out these two big to fail banks. Right. And, and I mean, just, just think about this leverage that's a lot. I mean, you've got people who are, are window dressing, which means that they're running at higher level, levels of leverage, you know, during you know, mid-month activities or whatever, then they bring the leverage down at the end of the month to meet the regulatory requirements. Probably have these banks taking like 40 to 1 leverage or more at some point. At 40 to 1, it, if you have a mo an adverse move of 2.5% against you, you're on margin call. Right. It's not a lot. 2.5% is not yeah. a lot. Um, and to think every major financial institution is engaged in these transactions because they can. And... You know, if you go back to, to Adam Smith, you know, people people think that you know he's just all laissez-faire capitalism. He wasn't. I mean, if you if you read, um, you know, his writings, I mean, it's it's really he he is in favor of, of light re regulation, you know, sensible regulation, but to keep the the participants in capital markets from destroying themselves. Right. Exactly. And we've seen time and time again that. Um, you know, these banks, they will destroy themselves. Exactly. Greenspan even said that recently. You know, he said you can't allow the banks to run amok because they're going to take everything down. They're taking down the commodity markets right now. And I think that's where they made their mistake with MF Global. It's not Lehman Brothers where all it's affecting is 
Lehman and the shareholders. This is affecting the integrity, the core foundation of the commodity markets. Once you do that, you should find some resistance. Seems like the only resistance the two big to fail banks have found so far is you and I and a handful of other individuals, which to me seems like a reasonable scandal in and of itself. Right. I mean, and there's more coming. Like, listen, Occupy Wall Street, they don't have a message or really like any stated goals or, or anything like that. But they have tapped into a rage that's there yeah, in the American people. Wrong. And, and pe people know that, that the banks are trying to screw them for every last nickel. Okay. And listen, I'm not, you know, I, I don't work for charity. I mean, I run a, you yeah, know, come we're on. Both a, in the financial yeah. services I mean, I, I run a hedge fund, basically. Right. Right. Sure. I mean, structure's a little different. But at the end of the day, I run a, a for profit hedge fund. Sure. I'm a capitalist. I'm small enough where but as long I as fail, we disclose, no one's going to bail me out. Right. right. But as long as we disclose what we've got going on, yeah, what difference does yeah, it make? But my point is that I'm not here saying banks shouldn't make money. Right. Right. We want banks to make money. Banks making money is a cornerstone of, of our yep. country. And if banks can't make money, really the whole rest of society can't make money either. But what what needs to happen is a little balance, okay? And you know, guys like Jamie Dimon who go out in the media and just drop bombs all the time and like you know gleefully play the villain when they already have more money than they could ever spend, you know, and they they do things like designing processes where overdrafts will generate 10 times the fees that they need to, just so you could tax that last little half a percent of VIG out of, out of you know, generally poor people. You don't see rich people, like, overdrafting their account 10 times, right? right. Um, you know, so when you do things like that, and you do, like, robo-signing and fraudulent documents to get people out of their houses, right. you know, when, when you just, you take that extra, like, knife into the back of the people who, who need help, you know, and you, you, you destroy them, that's where the rage comes in. No one's pissed that J.P. Morgan makes profits. You know what? I mean, if J.P. Morgan makes a lot of money off lending, um, or you know, even their own trading or whatever, no one's going to be mad about that. Right. Um, but but really, what these guys need to do is check their hubris at the door and say, if they continue down this path, where it's just they're out to to destroy, essentially everybody else. You know, so they can make just a little bit more. Isn't that isn't that crazy? They, they will destroy themselves. It, exactly. And I wonder if they get I'd love to interview some of those guys because they're destroying the commodity markets right now. They don't get it. 